Thank you, Bibby. Good morning, everybody. I was uh, struck by a statement yesterday by uh, Daniel Balaban, who was speaking about zero FOMI in Brazil, and he said, it isn't? Okay. And Daniel said that most poor people in the world feed their families and earn their income from farming. And when smallholder farmers increase their production, nutrition is improved and hunger and poverty are reduced. But smallholder farmers are not going to increase their production unless they have access to a market. And I also acknowledge that this does not take into account the urban poor who are increasing and will need different types of attention and interventions if one's going to improve nutrition and income in urban areas. Now, I am the WFP guy here, and I have to say a little bit about WFP. And I'm glad to say that WFP has uh, changed greatly over the past few years, and we are now seeking to adjust the WFP food basket to include more nutritious foods. We buy locally now about one billion U.S. dollars worth of food, mostly in developing countries. We just got our figures in for 2010, and we bought $1.25 billion worth of food locally. And that local purchase and the distribution of that food in WFP programs that reach vulnerable people provides a huge opportunity to leverage improved nutritional and health outcomes. One opportunity for leveraging agriculture for health and nutrition is the Purchase for Progress, or the P4P initiative. And P4P is a five-year R&D experiment to learn lessons for sharing with all actors that uses WFP's demand for food to improve market access for smallholders in 21 pilot countries in Africa, Central America, and Asia. And it's linked to partners' supply-side expertise. So P4P is built on partnerships. The objective is to link half a million smallholder farm families to sustainable markets, not just to the WFP market, but to much wider markets through increasing quality, increasing production, and reducing post-harvest losses through capacity development. Now, no one size fits all, and we and partners are experimenting in the 21 countries with different, different approaches, warehouse receipt systems, commodity exchanges, cooperative unions, farmers' organizations of all sizes, including women's groups, interestingly, and forward contracting. So my comments on enhancing nutrition along the value chain emanate from our practical field experience in the past two years with smallholder farmers in those 21 countries. The first area is crop choice, and we need to link more effectively to agricultural research systems. The adoption of research findings is excruciatingly slow. There's much greater potential to link small producers to nutritionally improved varieties, such as improved rice with enhanced iron, protein maize, and to link to the other actors promoting nutrition and production, such as Harvest Plus. Farmers do not like risks when they're poor. And we may consider using vouchers to improve access to improved varieties for small producers. Another area is gender opportunities. In Africa, for example, something on the order of 60 to 70 percent of agricultural labor comes from women. And we are making an effort with the P4P to use the program to empower women economically as well as socially. One route we found is to focus on crops cultivated by women, such as pulses, cow peas. Uh, another is to involve women in microprocessing to add value. For example, producing and marketing crops that would improve women's access to nutrition crop, nutritious crops while saving time and firewood, such as partially cooked pulses that would reduce cooking time and it could be packaged for sale at local shops. And another that 
would seem to be so easy and straightforward, but it's not really done, is to use farmer organization meetings as opportunities for nutrition education for men and for women. Another area is reducing microtoxins in staple foods. And aflatoxin has been linked to stunting in children and may explain why stunting rates have remained high even where food av availability has improved. We need a much more concerted effort to improve testing facilities in country. We are working on this with universities, NGOs, in Mozambique, in Afghanistan with the Ministry of Health. Aflatoxin testing needs to be incorporated into food production and storage systems to ensure increased safety for consumers who have remained innocent of the effects for generations in developing nations. I was amazed to find out that in the United States where they do test for aflatoxin on all that maize produced in Texas, Bibby was mentioning Texas and the cows, uh, they dilute when they find aflatoxin to keep the aflatoxin levels within acceptable ranges. And if they can't, what do they do? They ship it to Mexico. <laughs> Another area is value addition. And we need to focus on enhancing nutrition in the value addition process, which I know Mark from Gain is going to speak about. We're addressing this at two levels with P4P. Uh, firstly, medium scale processing opportunities, which we need to explore further. Linking smallholder farmers to commercial medium scale processing, existing factories. And that link is presently being made in Guatemala, in Mozambique, in Uganda, and we've begun processing in Afghanistan, locally uh, in nutritionally enhanced products, and that will shortly also be linked to smallholders in Afghanistan. And another value addition option can be small-scale processing, uh, much more at the, the district level. Uh, again, the example of partially, partially cooking and then packaging and retail marketing nutritious foods, which would make them easily accessible to mothers. And another area we haven't done nearly enough with is preservation. Now, WFP targets the world's most vulnerable mothers and young children in 80 countries, about 100 million people a year, something approaching 80% of them being mothers and young children, and ready-to-use ready supplementary foods, or RUSF, products are increasingly part of those operations. So in Pakistan, as one option within the larger toolbox, we are helping to meet our demands through local nutrition solutions in partnership with local industry, and we're locally producing a chickpea-based RUSF that was recently deployed in the flood emergency there and reached something like 300,000 children. And complementing the local production of RUSF, we need to work to educate mothers on the right food choices for young children. And then in time, as local RUSF products are available in the local retail market, they might be included in voucher programs. So in addition to in-kind food, which is what you think of with WFP, WFP is now programming about $300 million a year worth of cash and vouchers. And cash and vouchers provide another opportunity for improving health and nutrition and for enhancing the inclusion of perishable crops, such as vegetables, in the food basket. So in conclusion, WFP is now increasingly focused on achieving nutritional outcomes rather than just feeding people. And most importantly, in agricultural nutrition and health efforts, I think we should all seek to act as advisors and partners with governments as they take over the implementation of programs, which would include, for example, the P4P or homegrown school feeding programs, and the coordination function should rest with governments, and we should work to build government capacity to ensure synergies between agriculture, nutritional, and health efforts at the national level. Thank you.